Now, I talk about whitetail water holes all the time, and I have a lot of strategies in my water hole playlist. I don't know how many videos I had. I don't know if it's 10 or 12, but I have several on water holes. And, uh, and I talk about where they should be located, if you need them based on if you have water on your land, if you don't, if you have water, where they should go. So there's a lot of that in my water hole playlist. And uh, so you can find that out, check it out, I urge you to. But we're gonna talk about more how you can maintain your water holes, how you can make sure that your water hole becomes a buck magnet and you're not actually spooking deer away because of this location. I wanna talk about, I get so many questions. How do I keep them clean? How often do I have to clean them? How often do I fill them? We're gonna answer some of those questions right now because a whitetail water hole, although you don't want one at every stand, we'll talk about the numbers of that. Um, but as we go through here, I want to hit some key points for how you can maintain that water hole and some of the tips that we've learned. I started using tank water holes in about 2004. It was something that we thought up of and we thought about it. We, put, we started putting them out there. We used half 55 gallon drums. I'll just leave you with this real quick before we get going on the points. We found that splitting a 55 gallon drum in half sounded like a great idea. You put it at the bottom of a puddle, you dig it out. So it represented the bottom of that puddle. We found that 27 and a half gallons was not enough to last more than two weeks in normal conditions when you have average use, let alone heavy use. And then we found that the deer, if the water holes run out, then the pattern of use disappears. It takes another week or two to establish that pattern of use and you just don't have them out that amount of time. In October and November, as those days are flying by, you need to use, we recommend at least 100 gallons, 100 gallon tank, and we're gonna talk about that. The first point, once you have these water holes established and they're in the right location and maybe you've had them there for a few years, there's some talk online and get questions about putting goldfish in the water holes to keep the algae clean, to keep the mosquitoes. Folks, deer like stagnant, cruddy water, mosquito infested water. They don't mind. In fact, what you find during the summertime, deer don't hit the water that often. They do hit it frequently, especially I'm sure when it's really hot and dry, but most of the moisture requirements are met simply by the green vegetation that's growing all summer long. Now maybe you're in the arid southwest or southeast, it might be that they're hitting the water holes during the summer months more often because it is so arid, there's not a lot of green vegetation at that time. The green vegetation is all during the winter time, uh, further south you go, so it might be that case, but they don't mind the algae. And guess what, if you put a bunch of goldfish in there and they die, now you have a rotten cesspool of rotting meat even though it's fish and those deer are going to avoid it like the plague they cannot stand critters getting in there the same goes for some of the powdered additives that you can buy to put in water to keep mosquito larvae from forming and to creating the mosquito repellent basically you're putting that mosquito in that that garbage in there and that chemical and you're pushing away the deer as you do that. I found they don't like that chemical smell. The same can go as for, I have a friend that uh, he's a real big health nut and he put actually Kool-Aid with vitamins and minerals in his water hole. They turn red, the deer didn't even touch them or come close to them and they can just tell when there's something in that water that's man-made that shouldn't be there. And it doesn't matter if it's goldfish or mosquito, protective additive, even Kool-Aid, you can rest, be rest assured that those deer are going to leave. And kind of on that, that uh, minnow or that goldfish note, if you have them, them in there, you don't need them for one thing. But if they die, it's going to repel. And that's the same, and that's why you have to have a critter stick in the water hole. That critter stick is so critical because I've watched it. You know, squirrels go in there, they thrash around, they finally make it to the stick, and they get out of there. And if you don't have the stick, they just simply thrash around, thrash around, and then they die. And when they die, they stink that water hole up. And I found it takes quite a while to either flush that out with bringing water in or getting that critter out of there and letting the rainwater do its thing. It could take six months or more to clean that out naturally. And you really don't want anything dying, not to mention you don't want these poor little critters dying in the water anyways that you created a trap for you have to have that critter stick in the water and make sure that nothing dies in there and that could extend to adding those goldfish in there too. I get a question a lot about how often you have to fill these water holes. What's pretty cool is when we're using those 100 gallon tanks, 110 gallon tanks, we buy them from TSC, they're about $75. Someone told me they got them on sale for like 15 to 20 bucks this year. So that's pretty cool if you can get them, get them that cheap. But you don't have to fill them very often. I believe 
the last time, and Dylan could correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the last time we actually filled them, where we actually drove out, and I'm thinking down at our Reedstown property where we hunted was 2017. I think that was the last time. That sounded about right. Yeah, it's been it's been a while since we had to fill them, and unfortunately, and even in 2017, earlier in the year, um, and then 18 and 19, we've had torrential rains, and so we really haven't had to fill them that often. Even in 2017, it was just one year. I can say looking back to 2004 with a longer snapshot of historical use of the water holes, I would say that we're filling them one to two times every other year. So most years you don't have to fill them or half the years. Some years you fill them once, some years you fill them twice. And when I fill them really is mid-October. I'd like to drive right in with a vehicle if I can and fill them. But here's the thing, if you're in hill country or in slightly in a hill, you dig that, bear, that water hole down so that can collect water. Make sure the upside is not too steep because deer do not like to stick their head and be buried by a hill where they can't look around. And that's why water holes in the bottom of a deep ravine, even if they get water down there, if they have to actually go down there and they can't see out, then it's that predatory instinct where they want to avoid those predators that they're not going into, down into a water hole that might be six, eight feet deep. There's water in the bottom. They have to fully, completely hide themselves in a 20 by 20 hole where they can't see out. They really don't like to do that unless they're very desperate. And again, it goes back to, I want you to keep and remember all of this when filling water. Deer do not need to take a drink, drink for weeks at a time. Their moisture requirements, the type of the food that they eat meets those moisture requirements during the summertime especially. And that's why right now when I'm walking properties in January, February, March, we were on a, a, a property the last two days up in Hudson, Wisconsin, in that area. And we found a creek area where it's all frozen and there's this little hole. It had to be six by eight inches and there's water rushing in it. And every track in the area came to that hole. They're thirsty right now because all they have is the snow. They have trouble getting, there's no green vegetation. So this is actually a time where they take a drink. And then of course, the times they really take a drink are during the rut. We see the end of October. That's when you can tell the peak rut picks up because they're really hitting those water holes. So making sure that you have water in early October or mid-October or end of September is far more valuable and a far more use of your time putting water holes than if you're trying to fill them in July, August, September. Establish that pattern of use end of September, going into October. They really start hitting it heavy the end of October, early November. You don't have to worry about cleaning them out, but you do need to worry about keeping them full. And about a 100 to 110 gallon tank does really well at keeping those water holes full and you really don't have to film that often. Again, we haven't filled them since 2017. Now, something to think about, what I like about those 100 to 110 gallon tanks from TSC, that size, somewhere around here, uh, right about waist high, if it's standing on a surface for a short person like me, but they're right about that height. And that seems to be about the right balance between how shallow it is and how deep it is, how wide it is, how much water it holds. There's a really nice size out there. It's about 150, 160 gallons. It's about four by four. And so that one's not a bad one either. You still have that same 30 inch depth, but the depth is important because there's less surface area of water per the total amount of volume of water in the tank. What that means is there's less surface area to evaporate. So when that sun's coming down, I'll give you the opposite is a large kiddie pool. So a lot of times people use a kiddie pool at six to eight feet wide. They're putting it down, it's only 10 inches shallow because you don't want these little kids drowning, so it's really shallow and so much easier to evaporate on a hot day. You lose so much surface evaporation when you have a large percentage of the surface open per the amount of volume, the same volume that you might find in more like a 30 inch area. So we find that 30 inches, obviously, if it was a two foot by two foot by six foot deep, they're not drinking all the way down to the bottom. So we found that the three foot by four foot 30 inches deep is right at that balance. We've even seen them get down to their knees to take a drink. Most of the time they can lean down really far and get whatever water's in there. And so think about that depth of the water hole if you're installing them. Make sure you're not going too shallow or you will need to fill them a lot more often than we have since going back to 2017. One, one of the points that I think is really important, and, and, and of course this can, this can keep you from putting a water hole in some locations, but um, you really need to dig that water hole down below ground level. I talked about that when we first had those 27 and a half gallon water holes that were cut in half from 55 gallon drum. And we tried to make those the bottom of the water hole. So we literally sculpted all the way around 
so that we could funnel water to that. We knew right away that, man, this just doesn't look like enough. And so we put them down lower and sure enough, they dried up pretty quickly. We found that not only putting the lip below ground level is important. We found that when you're putting it down below ground level, that makes sure that you collect runoff. It collects runoff, collects water, and guess what? It doesn't spook deer. We've seen time and time again. If you're living in a fantasy land state where deer aren't used to, they they don't really care too much. I have clients that'll put a 250 gallon metal tank right on top of a, a food plot or on the way to a food plot, and deer hit that, and they don't really care. But you do that in Wisconsin, Minnesota, most areas of Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, high hunter pressure areas, Ohio could go on and on. But you're going to find that there's more of an aversion to those water tanks the higher they're above ground level in the locations that have the highest form of hunting pressure. So really make sure that you're digging those in below ground level. If you hit a rock and you're six inches above the surface, well then just try to sculpt it up to the lip of the water hole with a little bit of earth and, and make sure that you're trying to get those water holes into the ground as low as possible. And I could even say we use the, the dark black plastic tanks or the flat black, matte black. They don't shine too much. And what we found with those and why those work so well is they really do blend into the ground. You have dirt that's being washed over the edge as opposed to something light or white or light blue like a kiddie pool. Deer see in shades of gray. I believe they see that black as very dark compared to a light blue. If they see that light blue line, deer know that lines, straight lines, circles, they know that those are not natural in the deer woods. And I wouldn't want to trust a deer getting used to a light blue rim or a white rim or a gray rim where they can see that from a long ways away. I think they're just gonna get startled by that. It, we even notice the bucks that come in, you can see them a little tentative when they first come into those water holes. It doesn't take very long for them to get used to it, especially if you have a pattern on your property, but make sure you dig them below level and that'll really help you out. One of the, the easy pieces of maintenance that we do every year with water hole is we just simply rake them out one time in the spring. I like to rake them out in the spring because you're gonna receive a lot of rainwater. So you're really raking those out in April and I'm getting, we have walnuts in some areas, um, brush, branches, leaves, debris, soil, worms, whatever it might be. You're trying to rake everything out so that you have a clean amount of water, debris free going into the, into the summer month. And really for cleaning them out, that's all we do. Again, going back, deer like warm, stagnant water. I've even been told that there might be nutrients in there that they enjoy. They also might not like the cold, clear, creek water it's more of a shock to their system think about when they're drinking it's not like they're just sitting around hanging out at the bar and they're enjoying a drink they drink with a purpose they drink because they need to quench their thirst they drink it and then they move on and they're gone they're very efficient drinkers they don't want to sit there with really cold water that's hitting their system and lap it up they'd rather go into that warm water if they have it drink it up and i find stagnant ponds stagnant water holes they do much better than attracting for attracting deer than a cold clear brook and I see that over and over again that's been talked about for a very long time so just simply raking them out once in the spring usually April is a good time to do that you can capture all those rain showers that are following but when it comes to May to me May is white tail water hole month it's a perfect time early May the soil hasn't dried out foliage so you're, you really have to use a pickaxe to get it usually there's a lot of moisture in the soil a lot easier to dig in May Great time to get it established. Great time to get that water hole down below ground level. Get the deer used to it. Establish the pattern of use lightly throughout the summertime and ever increase, increasing into September, October, November. If you're throwing one out there in October, don't expect much use going into November. That's a lot of disturbance to the area. It takes them a little while to get used to. Not too long, especially when you bury it and get into that, that location. But May is whitetail water hole month, so think about that when we're coming up to the end of April, May. Great time. I like May because a lot of times food plots, if you're spraying them, if you're frost seeding, if you're spraying simazine on as a pre-emergent for switchgrass, even if you're planting, you're right at that window where you're trying to control weeds. You're not quite getting your food plots in the ground yet if you're planting some in the spring. So May is that tweener time where end of April, May, You've already sprayed, you've already controlled weeds, great time to hit the water holes and, uh, and make sure you get them started. A lot of times when we start them, we are simply, a lot of them are remote locations where we can't fill them. 
So we're expecting rainwater to fill them, and we've had some great luck with that throughout the years with our water holes. Now saying that with May is uh, whitetail water hole month, and you're really trying to keep these attractive to deer as, as strong as possible, is I have a really good client, uh, friend of mine now, uh, a lot of my clients become friends, but his name's Paul. He's over in New York. Um, he's actually a 9-11 hero. I have a lot of respect for him. But um, he's had a problem with bears on his. So he faithfully put his water holes in last summer. And those bears, he has tons of pictures of those bears playing in the water holes. Mama bear, cubs, all kinds of bears coming into it. And they love that water hole all summer long. When you bring bears regularly into a certain location on your parcel, even if you're going to bear hunt, if you're running a bear bait in certain areas where it's legal, then uh, you're really going to destroy the whitetail potential in those areas with the act of bears coming in and certainly with that water hole. So one way to bear proof your water hole is just to cover it up and make sure that those bears can't get into it. Uh, make sure it's drained. Take it out, tip it over, whatever you do. But if you have a problem like that in an area, just make sure they don't establish a pattern of the use. Usually those bears are really wandering around the springtime. They find a water hole like that, they take drinks, they start playing in it. Maybe get your water holes established a little bit later. Maybe get the water hole in, cover it up with a board, cover it up with some soil, uh, keep the bears from getting into it. The good thing is water, I would imagine they could smell that water, know it's there, but it's certainly a lot different than a rotting donut that you use for bear baiting. And, uh, and that's, make sure if you have bear concerns, I have seen it over and over again where it's very important. You don't want those bears being attracted over and over to that site. And there's a lot of times we've had bears in the past on our water holes, even sitting on their back like they're taking a bath or standing on the rim of a big water hole on that tank water hole. So that's one way to make sure you, keep, you get rid of the bears. And finally, don't hesitate with water holes to put them in very remote locations. Obviously, I talk about filling them, but we have a high percentage, probably 50% of our water holes that we can't fill and we can't bring water into because they're in a remote location. We don't have a road. We're not gonna build the road into for a water hole. But if you're sculpting that down and you're getting it below ground level, and one more thing I'll, else I'll add is don't worry about filling them. Make sure they're in that area where they're below ground level and make sure deer can get to them for just a, from just about every angle. Again, deer don't wanna put their, their head in a hole. They wanna be able to actually move all the way around. I've had clients that have put water holes in a V of logs, just like you would have a bear bait we are trying to get that quartering away shot from a tree stand, and that doesn't work with water holes. Deer are creatures of prey. For a bear, sticking their head in a triangle and getting some donuts, they could really care less. Bears have nothing to fear other than by man. They really don't care. Deer do not like sticking their heads below a bunch of brush and having brush on the side, brush on either side, and getting into a situation where they can't see out because again, they don't know what's around them. So make sure there's a lot of room for them to freely spin. They can get to that water from almost any angle. It's open around there. They don't have to feel threatened or that their head is in the sand basically when they're trying to put it down and get in some water and that uh, a predator can jump out of them anytime. Again, May, white tail water hole month. If you haven't put them in, great time to do so. I hope some of these maintenance and strategy tips helped for making sure that you have a buck magnet this fall for water, think cruising bucks, late October. They'll let you know when the pre-rut happens because they're gonna start hitting the water holes all day where they might not hit the water holes at all in August, September. Again, they don't need to take a drink. Don't let anyone tell you you have to have water on your property because they deer have to take a drink every single day. That is not true at all. You can simply buy those water holes at TSC, pretty cheap price, and enjoy those water holes. Enjoy the white tail water hole strategies that I have in my playlist too, because I have a lot of them. I've been doing this for a very long time. They work extremely well. They really work for establishing that pattern of use for actually joining bedding areas to food plots. Don't put the water holes out in the food plot. They're already going to the food plot, so you don't need a water hole there. Instead, put a water hole, maybe a mock scrape combo on the way to food between bedding areas in cruising zones areas where bucks are going to be located during the daylight cruising and you'll be right on target for using a water hole to define movement to attract deer to the area to define movement right by a tree stand and ultimately create a buck magnet right in front of your tree stand for a shot this fall